it's not one of those fights where Crawford can easily lose. I mean, Crawford, Crawford's very skillful, man. He's, he's, he's the top dog right now. I mean, he's very skillful. Terrence Crawford, and everybody's trying to age him out, bro. The dude two weeks ago did 15 four-minute rounds. 12 with Shakur, three with Shakur's cousin. Four-minute rounds, 30 seconds rest. Think about that. He has a Numerous enthusiasts have eagerly anticipated a showdown featuring Terrence Crawford, dreaming of a clash with none other than Saul Canelo Alvarez. Yet the wait for this epic battle is destined to stretch a tad longer than some may have anticipated. Nevertheless, when the moment finally arrives, it's bound to exceed all expectations and prove well worth the patience. Turkey Al Alshik, the chairman of Saudi Arabia's General Entertainment Authority, who holds the greatest purse strings in boxing, at least thinks that way. According to ESPN, he divulged his strategy to revamp a sport in dire need of repair, sparking curiosity among many about who would step up as Crawford's next challenger. Israel Madrimov is set to step into the boxing ring on August 3rd in Los Angeles to contend for the WBA junior middleweight title, yet Al Al Sheikh's ambitions extend far beyond this bout. This marks the inaugural event organized by the entrepreneur beyond the borders of Saudi Arabia, signaling merely the inception of his grand vision. Turkey Alal Sheikh claims to have a plan to match Canelo and Crawford in the ring later in the year, either in December or even as early as 2025, but it might not be that simple. After his victory over Jaime Munguia last Saturday, Canelo Alvarez left no room for ambiguity. He confidently asserted his ability to dictate terms and requirements for any future challengers. Speculation is rife that David Benavides may be the next in line to step into the ring with him come September. Canelo affirmed his willingness to step into the ring with anyone if the price is right. Yet he also subtly reminded everyone of his track record, having taken on all comers in the past. So it's only a question of time before negotiations solidify for him to square off against Crawford. Canelo prevailed in five battles to retain the undisputed super middleweight title, and more significantly, he continued to be the boxing world's most famous person. Being the standout star in the realm of combat sports, Alvarez dictates the pace and seized another opportunity to make an impact with a knockdown, albeit failing to secure a knockout victory. Alvarez sent Jaime Munguia to the canvas in the fourth round of Saturday's match, yet akin to Jermel Charlo and John Ryder in previous encounters, Munguia rose before the count, but ultimately succumbed to a decisive defeat by unanimous decision. As time goes on, the people will call for Alvarez to take on emerging star David Benavidez, dubbed the Mexican Monster, who made headlines last year by viciously beating Demetrius Andrade and Caleb Plant. Alvarez said, If the money's right, I can fight Benavidez right now. I don't give a shit. It's only a matter of money at this point. Everybody is asking for everything. He further added, When I fought Lara, Austin Trout, Miguel Angel Cotto, Mayweather, Billy Joe Saunders, GGG, everybody said I don't want to fight them and I fought all of them. So right now, I can do whatever I want. Alvarez remained steadfast in his refusal to face Benavidez, adamantly asserting his autonomy after a lifetime of achievements. Undeniably, his legacy and accolades speak volumes. At 33, he stands among the pantheon of all-time boxing greats. Yet basking in the limelight as the sport's premier luminary comes with the weighty expectation to heed the desires of the masses. The fans now are getting upset because this is the biggest fight on the table, Benavidez told ESPN earlier Saturday at the news conference to promote his June 15th fight versus Oleksandr Gvozdik. He added, and why are we going to leave it on the table for no reason? This is a fight that has to happen, and I'm going to keep putting these types of performances where people are going to want to see it. The demand for this fight is really high, it's bad blood. I don't like him, he doesn't like me. Alvarez holds the prestigious position of being ESPN's fourth-ranked pound-for-pound boxer. His unbeaten streak commenced when he ascended to the 175-pound weight class to take on Dmitry Bivol in May 2022. Since then, he has triumphed over formidable opponents, 
notably engaging in a trilogy showdown with the formidable Gennady GGG Golovkin. However, not even an aging GGG carried the threat that Benavidez does at this point. None of those fighters did. Benavidez added, He's not going to fight me. I think he's just running out of things to say. He's literally said every excuse. He said that I only bring 25 pounds in and I'm not nothing. I'm this and that. I'm not dedicated. I'm not respectful. Benavidez further added, I think he's scared of him losing and then me taking all his fans. That's what it is. I don't really think he's scared of me. I think he doesn't want me to get the torch passed. Benavidez isn't the sole contender Alvarez can silence critics against. Another formidable opponent looms in the form of Terence Crawford, ESPN's top-ranked pound-for-pound boxer. Crawford, who witnessed Alvarez's display firsthand, departed with a newfound respect for Alvarez's prowess in the ring. At 36 years old, Crawford secured a thrilling ninth-round TKO triumph against Errol Spence Jr. last July, solidifying his status as the undisputed welterweight champion. Now he's poised to ascend to the 154-pound division for a title clash against Israel Madrimov scheduled for August 3rd, edging closer in weight to Alvarez, hinting at an imminent clash between the two titans. The showdown between Crawford and Madrimov marks Saudi Arabia's inaugural venture into hosting boxing events beyond its borders. Turkey Alalshik, at the helm of Saudi Arabia's General Entertainment Authority, expressed to ESPN recently his aspirations to bring forth a Canelo Crawford spectacle come December or January. You got two of the top fighters of this decade, not just in the past year or so, Crawford told ESPN following Alvarez's win over Munguia when asked why he believes a fight against him would be bigger than Alvarez facing Benavidez. He added, You've got two fighters that have been at the top for 10 years. You got the no one pound for pound fighter in the world, and you got the no one money man. I never like to overlook anybody. I got a fight coming up on August 3rd, and that's where my main focus is. Alvarez holds the reins in his hand when it comes to choosing his opponents, asserting his authority earned over years of dedication to his craft. Whether he strides into the ring as the odds-on favorite against a contender like Edgar Berlanga, or squares off against the formidable duo of Benavidez and Crawford, one undeniable truth remains. Canelo calls the shots, and Canelo will follow his own path. Crawford added, I thought it was a good fight. I thought Munguia fought hard. I just think his inexperience caught up to him and made him fall in and square up and not stepping in with his punches, allowed Canelo to sit back, counter and pick his shots. Canelo was a real patient. Meanwhile, in the aftermath of Alvarez's recent triumph over Jaime Munguia, a reporter from Fight Hype couldn't resist questioning Jeff about the hypothetical showdown. The reporter began by asking Jeff about his impressions on Canelo's performance before diving right into the fantasy fight. In response, the retired world champion said, I mean two weight classes. I think he could still have some problems with Crawford. Although Jeff was certain that Crawford posed a threat, he did not undervalue Canelo's ability. Jeff added, but still, that weight is something to deal with, and you can't just say that because of Crawford's skills, he can automatically go up to 168 pounds and beat the guy that's been doing this for a long time. And also, Canelo has been one of the best fighters in the world for a long time. So, that's a big jump. Well, there you have it. Jeff Mayweather holds firm in his belief that Terence Crawford wouldn't come out victorious against Canelo Alvarez despite acknowledging the formidable challenge it would pose. However, in the unpredictable realm of boxing, where a single blow can change the course of a match and one misstep can spell defeat, certainty is a rare commodity. Certainly, Crawford is gearing up for a showdown with Israel Madrimov in the fiercely contested 154-pound division, eyeing a championship in his fourth weight class. Meanwhile, Canelo holds sway in the 168-pound category, leaving Crawford with two more divisions to conquer on his journey toward a potential clash with the reigning champ. The intriguing question arises, can Crawford preserve his exceptional skill set amid such a significant weight gain? Offering insights, Crawford's training companion weighs in on the matter. Canelo's victory was like a well-telegraphed punch, anticipated by many long before the fight even began. 
Despite Mungia's strong start, the outcome unfolded exactly as most pundits foresaw. No surprises in the ring this time around. Shakur Stevenson, having assisted Crawford in preparation for the Spence Jr. bout, chimed in on Canelo's triumph, also weighing in on the hypothetical matchup between Canelo and Crawford. Turning to social media, Sugar Stevenson wrote, Halavu fighter Canelo is, still think Bud beats him. If that wasn't enough, former world champion and retired boxer Tony Bellew agreed with Stevenson saying, he ain't lying with a gif. Whoever believes what, the unfortunate reality is that Canelo is nearing the end of his boxing career. Therefore, there is little possibility this bout will ever take place. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.